Uh, today we learn a Sefer Shmiras Lashon, and the topic is inspire repentance. Okay, God would take note of uh, Mitzora repentance and would heal him uh, of his affliction. The coin would go outside of Israel camp to examine Mitzora. Having been declared healed by the coin, the Mitzora would uh, would be, uh, begin the purification process. We, um, which is included the offering of the temple uh, of the temple sacrifices, as described in the Torah. Later. Okay, so basically, only coin can declare him uh, pure. I mean, so only Abraham is with that, but Hashem. So every uh, only coin can declare somebody, uh, as we said, not pure and pure. Right? Okay, one second. Switch to this view. Okay, pure and not pure. All right, so now um, after seven days, so this coin uh, goes to this person who is outside of the camp. And, uh, and uh, as we said before, this, uh, the, the, this malady, this, uh, uh, this uh, sickness is only uh, spiritual. So only if he did Teshuva, only, only if he did bad, feel bad that... Uh, he spoke bad about somebody else, uh, he, he can get cured. Otherwise, he got to stay uh, uh, like this. Okay, continue. Having um, benefited from God's infinite kindness of being cured of his affliction and restored uh, to the state of Tahara, uh, racial purity, the person would, uh, uh, would, upon returning home, surely uphold his earlier resolution. He would beg forgiveness of those who are who, those he wronged, and strive with all his strength to avoid speaking Lashon Hara in the future. Thus, um, he would be completely cleansed of sin. So, what it says here? Very interesting. So, first we said uh, after Hashem forgave him, okay, he has to bring sacrifices to the temple. Okay, that's one part. But the Shua, uh, if if it's done between. Uh, uh, men and Hashem, it's easy part, easy, right? It's three steps, but uh, with the, between uh, um, between men and men, it's not so easy. So there is extra step. So you ha you have to ask forgiveness for, for this uh, from these people, and they'll do restitution, whatever it means. Whatever uh, if, if if guy, let's say, let's say he borrowed money and saying, I'm, I'm going to pay you next week, next week, ne next month, and then he he did not pay. And because of that, uh, that, that person was uh, it was not exactly he, he was not exactly rich, and now he he went broke, and uh, now he cannot pay rent, and he, he got kicked out with the whole family because of this clown. So basically, it's it's not so simple just to bring him uh, these five thousand dollars and uh, and say okay I'm so sorry I I, I was stupid I, I was this and that. So it's not going to work. It's not so easy. So he, he would have to, like, uh, of course, ask for forgiveness. That's one thing. But uh, try to, uh, like, recompense the person. So maybe he went into debt, maybe, like, uh, but some things it's impossible to fix. So in, in the case of Loshan Hara, so he spoke. Loshan Hara, he feels bad. It's very good. It's very good for him. So, but now he has to go back and, uh, and ask uh, forgiveness of all of these people. One, uh, one may wonder why in, uh, in our day the affliction of Tsaras is not uh, manifested upon those who, uh, who habitually speak Losh and Hara. The Hida offers the following explanation. Yeah? So, I mean, uh, today, like, uh, if people ask, is it Losh and Hara? Is that not Losh and Hara? So if we would get this uh, punishment, right? So everybody would be clear that there is Losh and Hara. Why, why do, don't we have it today? So Hida said, so Hida uh, Chaim Yosef David Azulai, right in Sefer Nachal Kidu uh, Kidumin. Okay, I, I think he was from Morocco or or uh, Iraq. I don't remember. Okay, but big, big, big Chacham. Okay, when God uh, visits punishments upon the uh, in the individual, he does it um, for the person's benefit to purify him for his sins and steer him toward the repentance. So I think that this is a very critical statement. Uh, so Hashem, does Hashem punish? Absolutely, he punishes, yeah, that's not. So like, uh, 
like some some people say, no, Hashem does not punish; he is mer- he, he is merciful. But uh, one does not exclude the another, right? So he punishes to bring person to repentance, to bring him to to the right path, right? So okay, so there is no uh, contradiction, and to purify him from from, from his sins. So for, for some people, like uh, I don't know, I said a few times in my life, that people like pretty normal. So somebody is sick. So and say that uh, somebody said, please, please pray for his refreshment. I say I'm going to pray if he agreed to take something upon him. If he's going to take, I'm going to pray. We're going Thank to launch you, his Peter. Heart in his merit, but uh, but if he's not going to accept something on himself, it's better for him to stay sick. At least when he's in a, in a bed, he's not going to do all the sins uh, that he was doing. It's better for him. It's not I wish bad on somebody else. For sure. I wish him only on the bad or on the good. Can I ask a question? Yes. Um, when it comes to doing refuah shlomo for someone, are you allowed to do it for someone who's not Shemer Shabbat and uh, for a goy? That's, that's the problem. That's uh, that's exactly what, what I'm trying to explain. That's a big problem. So I'm, I'm going to pray to Hashem who put my merits on, right, on online for, for that person to get well. And he's going to go go to, to the bad ways. So in some sense, I'm accomplice to, to the crime. Right. It's not for if it's, let, let's say, I don't know, I'm not the tzad, but l- let's say all of our Torah combined, that, that we combine learning together, it have, it have some merits for sure. Group, uh, when we were starting group, for sure, special merit. That, that person gets well, and he went back to his Christine. Who's, whose fault is it? It's your and my fault, exactly. You understand? Right. So let him at least pr- promise to, t- to take something upon 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 himself. If even something small, it does not have to be big. Like at least uh, watch watch this lecture. You understand? So, so people people think it's like uh, what is it? It's a uh, focus focus. I, I asked this guy and he he read these old books and he going to say whatever mumbo jumbo and uh, I'm going to get well. Go back back to my Christine. All of this uh, do all of these things. So, I mean, I said a few times in my life, people were shocked, but I said, that's how it works. You want an easy way? There is no, you, 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 you ask Santa Claus, maybe he's going to help you. You understand? But Judaism is not like that. It's, it's, it's serious business. I show you the verses in the Torah, so all of these curses, and I, you, you just make a copy on a language that they don't understand. You make a photocopy, you send it to them, that's what Hashem said. You go against him, that, that's what you got. So what, what is the surprise? Other, uh, opposite, you have to be glad that it's happened to you because Torah is true. Now, so now you, you're living proof that Torah is true. So no, no doubts. Unless you want to be in doubt. You want to be in doubt without me. And sorry, does that still apply to goys as well? To Gentiles? No, uh, it, it depends who. Okay, so if it's a righteous Noahite, you can pray for him. Righteous Noahite. But if he's an idol worshiper, why would you do that? You understand? So some, sometimes people, I have a list. <laughs> some people try to push uh, this list of uh, people that I want to add. So I mean, that's not, not such an easy business to be in charge of the list. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> you. Okay, you're welcome. Continue. Um, so, so he does say, so someone... One, one more time, he, he does say, said it's very beautiful. When God visits the punishment of, uh, upon the individual, he does it for the, uh, the person's benefit. He, he, Hashem doesn't have grudge against anybody. He, he loves everybody very much. He wishes only the, the best. But so, for some people, it's the best to stay in bed and do not go out. That's, uh, I mean, at least they can uh, keep showers. You understand? And, and if, if, <laughs> so I, I, to, I told the, another guy, no, 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 to, yeah, another guy, so I, I said to him, so look, and now you, I, I asked you five times to keep kosher. You said no. So now you ain't bad, you are sick, so you're allowed to keep to do it not kosher. You understand? Because you think, so, and again, it's good for you, so don't, uh, don't be surprised. So sometimes you need to shock people. Otherwise, they, they think, like, they'll, uh, they, they make joke out of everything. Okay. So personal benefit to, to purify him um, of his sins and to steer him toward the repentance. Now it was only during the temple era that Mitzorah could attain Tahara purification. Okay, so I mean, uh, 
you can go basically uh, it's, uh, one way, right? You you cannot go like uh, to, to get this saras and cannot be ever um, like purified. So because we, we don't have temple in, and we don't have this uh, red cow, and uh, that's the issue. Today, however, when, uh, due to our sins, <laughs> there is no temple, no sacrifice, and no way for a coin to perform the other components of the purification process. If God were to afflict a person with tzaras, he would remain in his impure state for the rest of his life without any possibility to, to rid himself of it. Therefore, in the absence of the temple, the impurity of this affliction clings only to the soul, but not um, manifest to the person's body. So he that excellently beautifully. So if we start from then, so basically he's, uh, he's saying that uh, it, it cannot cling to, to, the soul, to, to the body. It would be no, no way for us to purify. And just, just wanna add to it, uh, there is a special language, there is a special language wording when, uh, when you say that, when, when, when somebody wants to become a Nazir, right? And a Nazir, uh, like, uh, not, not to eat grapes, not, not to the, the wine, wine and stuff like that. So basically, what, uh, what is the problem? The problem is, <laughs> if you say exactly the same wording, so he can become Nazir and, and without any, any way to, to rectify it. So that's that's dangerous. So we have to be very very careful. Does, but does, uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, does Nazir does it also apply on Shabbos so we can't have Kiddush or no? Yes. Yeah. 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 There, there is no time on that. No time off. So he has bread for Kiddush instead, correct? Or again, bread for Kiddush. You can. Yes. Do yes. It. Yes. Yeah. 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 It, it's 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 exactly uh, the the situation where he has no choice. Oh, yeah. like, uh, like like people, for example, somebody, for example, somebody is a diabetic or that they have problem. I, I don't uh, I forgot what is the name of this uh, disease. He, they cannot uh, drink wine. This alcohol intolerant, what I'm not. And then it's not about alcohol per se, but uh, but wine. What are ways? So that they cannot do. Uh, for yeah. for example, I know uh, you you can't have uh, uh, meat at a milk table, correct? Or you can't. I, why why? Why is switching to committed me? No, no, no. I'll, I'll explain to you right now. Because I want to say, then, how can he have, uh, let's say, how can he eat on Shabbos with people around him who have, you know, grape juice, let's say, or wine around them? You see? No, but but it's 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 not like it's, it evaporates and goes to him. It's uh, they, they can drink whatever they want. He's just a little careful and he drinks oh, yes. whatever. No? Sure. I, I don't think any... Uh, I mean... Uh, it's, it's a separate subject we're going to get to it. If you're allowed, allowed to eat meat and milk at the same table. Can I say something? Yes. I think it says in Shulchan Ruch, if the person you, is, is like a, a stranger to you, you can do that because you won't have that intention to eat from his plate. Yes. If it's your spouse or your friend, then you will say, oh, I want to eat from their plate. Now, that's kind of like a fence around a fence. Okay, yes, we'll yes, get yes. to that. I think. Yes, yes, we, we get to it. But uh, basically, you're right. Me, me personally, I, I never ever took a, a, anything from anybody's plate. That's it's like my way. But, but some people, I think uh, they, uh, I, they, they feel free. I mean, in my family, it's uh, no, nobody takes from anybody's plate. Me too. <laughs> but uh, are you allowed to do that with fish and meat? Fish and meat? What, what do you mean? And then the I same thing. I know some uh, customs in, I think, Sephardic customs. You no, it's, 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 a, it's a Jewish custom. It's a sakana. It's a danger. The danger to, to eat uh, meat and uh, and uh, and fish from the same plate. Okay, but, but have you, you, you can do uh, one after another. So I mean, if if you do, if, if you're not going to mix it, for example. So you, usually people have uh, on Shabbat they usually have fish table. And then they switch and they have soup or whatever, and they have uh, this uh, meat table, right? Meat, 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 meat dish. So if you have soup, there, there is no problem whatsoever. So you, you can break break between them. But sometimes, for example, they don't, don't have soup. Let's say Friday night. So they have fish, whatever they have fish. So they, the guy came late and he wants to eat fish, but they, uh, it's uh, one hour later. So they, everybody wants to eat meat. You understand? So he can eat fish, and then uh, he's not going to touch meat, and that's it. They can uh, they can be at the same table. 
there is a, there is a, there is no prohibition. Thank okay. you. You're welcome. All right. So let's uh, let's continue.